Welcome to the second episode of Voices, the Community Story webinar series, a series of succinct tutorials to help bolster skills and confidence in recording and editing oral history interviews. If you haven't watched the first episode on interviewing techniques, I recommend first going back, listening to it, and then moving on to this one. In this episode, we will cover how to record interviews using online video conferencing software. As it's become ubiquitous across the COVID-19 pandemic, they offer a free version, and many people are familiar with it, this tutorial will focus on Zoom. But other platforms, such as Microsoft Teams or professional podcasting software such as Iris, may also be used. Like all sound recording, before recording an online interview, there are a few questions about your space and the interviewee space you may want to consider. Where will you and the interviewee be recording? If you are using a laptop or mobile phone, are you able to record in a room with low ambient noise, away from traffic noise? Rooms with carpet or a rug are a better option than ones covered in hard surfaces, and so forth. Is there a time of day your space and your interviewee space is quieter? And is your internet bandwidth better at certain times of the day, such as early morning when the neighbors aren't as likely to be streaming television? Does your computer have an ethernet port? Connecting to the internet via ethernet can often provide a more secure connection. You can also save bandwidth by turning off video in the Zoom app. Think about the technical setup before the interview so when it's time to record, you can focus on the conversation. Do you have an external microphone? And does the person you're interviewing have an external microphone? An external microphone, either plugged directly into the computer's input or using an audio interface, will provide clear sound quality and a recording with better fidelity. Even a headset and headphones with a built-in microphone for phone calls is better than relying on a computer's microphone. External microphones are positioned closer to the sound source, the voices being recorded, and thus they cut down on the noise floor from the environment. And speaking of headphones, it's really important to wear headphones during the recording because that cuts down on feedback loops and an echoing effect. What's the intended duration of the interview? Zoom's free service, for example, only allows for 40 minute calls. But for longer interviews, you can always record across multiple sessions and then stitch the files together in a digital audio workstation while you are in the editing phase. Before you can begin recording the interview, you need to set up a free Zoom account and schedule a meeting. To do so, head to zoom.us. From here, either sign up or sign in. Once you're logged in, click the blue meeting button on the left-hand side panel. To schedule the interview and have the invite emailed to the meeting attendees, i.e. the interviewees, you can name the meeting and provide a short description, select the date, time, duration, and time zone of the meeting. There are a few settings you may want to check now, whether you want the video for the host and or the participant to be automatically turned on or off. If you're only recording audio, turning video off can serve bandwidth. Each meeting participant can toggle their video on and off as they see fit during the actual recording, so this setting just sets it automatically before the meeting begins. And perhaps you want to check automatically record meeting on the local computer. This means the video and audio recordings will be saved onto your computer. They won't be saved on the cloud unless you sign up for a professional account. After you press save, a new screen will appear. On the right-hand side, you can copy the meeting invite link and email it to the participants. And when it's time for the interview, you can join by clicking on the blue button at the top right, Start This Meeting. If you're using the Zoom desktop app, this is what the Join Meeting screen will look like. When you join the meeting, the arrow next to the microphone symbol and mute button will open a text box for you to select your microphone and speaker. Test the input and output and adjust the recording levels. I'm using an external microphone and headphones, which are displayed in the yellow frames. The recording dialog is in the top bar, displayed here inside a yellow frame. 
When the recording light is blinking red, the meeting is being recorded. You can stop and pause the recording in this box or in the bottom bar, which is also highlighted inside a yellow frame. Before beginning the interview, I recommend going into preferences and selecting the audio settings from the panel on the right. You can test the levels of your microphone as shown in the green bar next to input level. And if you want, you can pick a noise filter, which filters out background noise. Most people, especially if using external microphones, select low here, but currently, as you see, it's selected as auto. In the music and professional audio section, if you are in a professional studio where the room is acoustically treated, you can select original sound when you're in the meeting. This automatically disables the noise suppression filter, high pass filter, and automatic gain adjustments. As the name implies, a high pass filter allows high frequencies to pass through while filtering out low frequencies, such as wind and microphone handling noise. High fidelity music mode, echo cancellation, and stereo audio all take up more bandwidth. So if your internet connection is dodgy, try to limit the use of these modes. I don't have echo cancellation selected because I'm using an external mic and headphones to cut down on feedback. As for stereo audio, I generally prefer mono recordings for interviews and stereo recordings for music and field recordings. Finally, in the preferences, go to recording settings in the panel on the right. Here you can select where you want the recording stored. For this interview, I'll be saving the file onto the desktop. Or you can select a location for the recording when the meeting ends. For the sake of editing, I think it's important to save a separate audio file for each participant. This will create one mono file of you and another of the interviewee. This is particularly handy for group interviews. Zoom saves audio files as MP4s. This is a compressed format similar to the MP3, but the compression algorithm is specifically enhanced for online streaming. This is very handy for access and online playback, but unfortunately it is not a standard archival format or the format utilized for professional audio recording, production, and editing. The waveform audio file format, pronounced WAVE or WAV, is an uncompressed format used for both archival presentation and professional recording work. But because WAV isn't an option in Zoom, MP4 will have to suffice. It's a great format for sharing recordings, playing back on most listening equipment, and because it's compressed, it saves on storage space. Needlessly, if you want to follow archival standards and record uncompressed, you may want to look at other platforms such as Iris. Thank you for listening to this tutorial. Here are a few resources that review and also continue what we have covered. The first link from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee is a three-page PDF on how to use Zoom to record interviews. The second link is a blog post from Zoom and the final link is a YouTube video that I highly recommend. It's a tutorial on how to set up Zoom with external microphones with live audio samples of what each setting actually sounds like. In the next episode, episode three, we'll cover how to record in-person interviews. Thanks again for listening.